is Pastor Chandler, and I'm the pastor of Jackson Street United Methodist Church. Before we get started this morning, I want to take the time and welcome you. I'm going to welcome you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit. I was wondering, did you know he has risen? He is not dead. The tomb is empty. It was a borrowed tomb from the beginning. I felt the need to announce that because today is Resurrection Sunday. And all over the world, people are celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Rightfully so. Because he came and he did something for us that we could not do for ourselves. And that was to, to reestablish our relationship with God. To come to a place where we understand why the Torah is so important in our lives and in that relationship. So that we would understand that it's a covenant relationship that we have with God. So there are requirements on both sides of the relationship. So today let us celebrate. Because he has risen. He is not dead. He's alive in you and in me. And with that, let us bow our heads in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this marvelous day that we have never seen before. We thank you, Lord God, for the opportunity to celebrate the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord God, we thank you for this gift. It is a precious gift, God. It is a gift of life, life eternal. It is a gift of connection, of relationship with you, O oh God. It is a covenant gift. It is your way of saying to us, God, that you are a promise keeper. So this morning, Lord God, we want to say thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence to worship. Be with us now by your Holy Spirit, oh God. Rain fresh upon us and on those who are listening, Lord God, and those who are in their homes or in their cars or, or traveling on their way to work or on their way to visit loved ones, oh God. Be with them today, oh God, as we celebrate the victory over hell, death, and the grave the victory in Christ Jesus. And it is in his name we pray. Amen. And amen. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a desolate place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, and healed their sick. Now when it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the day is now over. Send the crowds away to go into the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They said to him, We have only five loaves here and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, and taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and said a blessing. Then he broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they took up twelve baskets full of the broken pieces left over. And those who ate were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. We have been talking for the uh, past two to three months about 
congregations and church ministry from the perspective of helping, healing, and hospitality. Um, I understand that today is, is, is Resurrection Sunday, and, 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 and we should celebrate that because it is very important in, in the life of, of people of faith. But, but even more importantly, or just as importantly, uh, we need to understand uh, God's ministry, uh, his, his reaching out to us through Jesus Christ. And, and, and it, wasn't, it was not just about uh, the glamour and the attention that he received. Uh, it was not about uh, popularity, uh, uh, growing a congregation, uh, even though we see all of these things taking place in his ministry, uh, it was more about character. It was more about his character and, and the character that, that, that we inherit by, by, by allowing ourselves to be grafted uh, or him to be grafted onto us or us becoming one in a relationship. Uh, uh, in the birth, in the transformation, uh, uh, in the awakening of our spirit, we need to understand uh, how it is we are to behave, how it is that we are to carry ourselves and, and what people are supposed to see in, in our actions or even in our reactions to, to things that we encounter. Amen, somebody. Uh, and, and we talk, we've been talking about this helping and, and how it is that, that we're helping and it seems like uh, uh, um, it's important that we look at the infrastructure of our ministry uh, uh, before we begin to reach out to folk, before we get to the part of healing uh, and hospitality. We need to know our role uh, uh, as, 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 as makers of disciples. We need to know our role as, as members of the body of Christ. We need to know what our role is and how we are to carry ourselves and operate within that role. Uh, we, we find, uh, or we, we talked last week about uh, encounters and, and, and what happened on, on, with the Good Samaritan story. We talked about how, how the Samaritan, uh, who, who, who was called the Good Samaritan, and we know in, in, in that setting and in that context that because he was not Jewish, uh, uh, he was uh, considered by the Jews to be less than a doll. But then we find in the story of the Samaritan uh, that very possibly the two people that passed, the, the, the gentleman on the road who had been attacked, could very well have been Jews uh, on their way to, to church that Sunday, on their way to the to synagogue. Uh, and because of traditions and because of rules uh, that they felt like they had to live by, uh, they passed by on the other side. But we have this Samaritan who is not a Jew, who, 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 who carry, carries or exercises uh, the characteristics that we should see in those who have a relationship with God, that we should see in those who are directly connected and know the law and know uh, the Ten Commandments, but we find that they did the opposite, amen, somebody, of what the commandments require of us, but we have this Samaritan who did just what was required. Mm. He observed, uh, or he did not avoid his encounter. He, he was not startled by his encounter. As a matter of fact, I believe if we were standing by watching, we would have saw that, that instead of him hesitating, he moved with haste to the person that needed the help. He, instead of hesitating or, or thinking, should I do this, without thinking, he just went straight to the problem and said, what is it that I can bring to this problem. And, and the reason why he was able to do this, number one, is, is, is because he had compassion. He was able to look upon the man with, 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 with sympathetic pity. Uh, he could put himself in that man's place. I, I don't know how many of you do, do that, but, but you should try that sometime. You should, when you see somebody in distress or when you see somebody sad or, or mad or angry or, or when you see somebody uh, 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 in, in, in a bad disposition, uh, instead of judging them, which most of the time we do, uh, instead of going straight to judgment mode, maybe we should be sympathetic. 
Uh, maybe we should put ourselves in their place. Maybe, may, maybe we should say, what, what, what would I expect or, or how would I expect people to respond to me if that was me in the place of the person that you see? Mm. Would you want them to respond like you? Uh, is the question that I often ask myself. Uh, and oftentimes, even after the fact, uh, um, th there should be some reflection of how I respond. And, 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 and when, when, when you see and you realize that you did not respond the way God would have had you to respond, there, there, there should be an instant repentance. There should be this instantaneous turn to God. Uh, first, let's ask God for forgiveness. Lord, forgive me for, for, for not representing you the way that I should. Uh, forgive me, Lord God, for, for, for not understanding the power that I have access to through your son, Jesus Christ. If I would just have paused for a moment, if I would have just thought for a second uh, uh, of what you did for me, hallelujah, somebody, when it was a need for me to be rescued, when it, when it was a need for me to have aid, when, when it was a need for someone to come to my rescue, uh, uh, if I would have just thought for a second uh, that you did not hesitate, but, but, but you sent someone right away, Lord God, uh, uh, you even sent your son, Jesus, the Christ, hallelujah, somebody, uh, in a time when, when we needed him the most. Hmm. And, and so, so when we have these encounters, these, these moments of, 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 of unpredictable incidents that, that occur in our life, that occur in the course of our day, uh, we still have to maintain this posture of compassion. And so, so, so as we start out the month of April, uh, I want you to reflect now, if you will, uh, uh, just, just go and, 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 and go through some of the videos that, that you already know are there on YouTube, uh, Jackson Street UMC, uh, and the, the, the ones that you know are there on, on Reason Chandler's page, and the ones that you know are there on Jackson Street United Methodist Facebook page, uh, go back and reflect on the things that we talked about. Uh, uh, as we lead up to this place now where, 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 where we're getting ready to transition from helping to healing. But, but, but this, this one more month now, we're going we're gonna to focus on what it means to help. How, how is it that, that, that we can help, hmm, my Lord? And for an example, today we have the feeding of the 5,000, my Lord. Hmm. Uh, the part about this that, 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 that I really enjoy uh, studying is, is Jesus looked upon the crowd and he had compassion. <laughs> uh, the Bible, I think, describes it as him being filled with compassion. My Lord, somebody. Uh, uh, and and, and, and when, with his compassion and with this feeling and with this feeling, uh, uh, with, this, with, this, with this sensation uh, of need, a need to do something, hmm, my Lord. Uh, the Bible says that, that, that he began to heal their sick. That was among them. My Lord, no doctor, no doctor's visits, no blood work. He just began to heal. Now, if I, if I had to guess what type of healing was going on, my Lord, uh, because our God does not do things halfway, and he, he doesn't just uh, operate on one part of us and leave another part of us broken. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, I, I'm willing to say that, that, that the healing that those people received that day was holistic. It, it, was, it was not just a healing of the physical man, but, but there's also a healing that took place of the spiritual man, hmm, my Lord. Even though they had no idea, hallelujah, that, that they were going to encounter this kind of healing, had no reflection on, on how Christ responded to them. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, when, 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 when you hear that, that Christ is looking, we need to understand that he does not look at us the way we look at ourselves. <laughs> he look at us holistically. He, he look at all of us. Yeah. He, he looks at our past, uh, our present, and our future. Hallelujah, somebody. Boy, if I had that kind of vision, I don't know if I could stand it. Huh? Hallelujah. But we know that Jesus has that kind of vision that when he looked on the crowd, he didn't just see a crowd of people, number one. He saw people that had a need, number two. He saw people that was fragile and broken. He saw people that, that, that had no place, that, that needed a place, that, was, that had no relationship with his father. He, he looked upon the crowd and, and was 
filled with compassion because he saw that the crowd had a need. Hallelujah, somebody. And it wasn't, a, a, it wasn't just one need. It was multiple needs. So when he healed, hallelujah, somebody, I, I could see him speaking into their finance. When, when he healed, I, I could see him speaking into their psyche. Hallelujah, somebody. When, when he healed them, I could see him speaking into their relationship with their families and their community. When, when he started healing them, hallelujah, somebody, I could see him looking at their blood pressure and looking at their sugar level and looking at, hallelujah, somebody, if they were lame or if they walked with a limp, uh, he was looking at their future and what they were going to need as time went by. He was looking at their past and he looked and saw the things that they needed to be forgiven of. And he looked at their present and he looked at their state of mind that they were in, even in his presence. And that's why he announced that, that the kingdom of God has come near to you and now is the time to repent. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, we have to understand that when, when we're filled with compassion, that, that there's still instructions, that there's still things that we need to focus on. And, and we need to learn how to look at God's people the way God looks at his people. The way he sees us is the way we have to start seeing each other. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because you see this thing, compassion, it can be overwhelming. I understand it. It, it can be challenging. Yes, it can. Because uh, 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 some of us don't, we're not used to operating in that mode. We're not used to having compassion. We're used to having our way. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. We're used to having things done for us. And not us doing for others. And so that's why it's important that the church will change their posture. That's why it's important that when the church goes out into the community, that the community does not see us as a people in need. Hallelujah. But, but they see us as a people coming to fulfill their need. Because why? We, we, could, we proclaim that, that, that we have a father who has a cattle on a thousand hills. Hallelujah, somebody. We, 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 we cheer and we brag about uh, 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 Jesus Christ, Christ being a lawyer who has never lost a case. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah, somebody. A, a doctor who's never lost a patient. When we talk about our relationship and, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we, we, we brag about how powerful he is. And yet, when we get an opportunity to be Christ, hallelujah, in somebody's life, uh, we become whipped. Uh, we become scared. Uh, we become fragile again. Uh, uh, this is not the posture that we need to carry. Even if we do have struggles, even if we do have things that we're dealing with, we got to know that we have Jesus Christ on our side. Hallelujah, somebody. We, we have to be able to demonstrate this compassion. It is important. Oh, yes, it is. You see, you see, you have to know yourself. You have to know the components of your makeup, your spiritual makeup, your physical makeup, your mental, your emotional makeup. Uh, uh, God wants us to operate in knowledge, not just in feeling. Uh, he wants us to know and be led by the Spirit. Uh, try the Spirit by the Spirit. You have to know the Spirit that is leading you because mission, you see, requires uh, the knowledge of one's vocation <laughs> or, or calling to go out into the world and to spread the gospel so it may be influencing uh, the influence of, of others to serve by faith. Uh, in order for us to do that, then, then we must be secure. We must be confident. Uh, uh, we must be knowledgeable. We must know who we are and whose we are and what he has called us to do. Uh, don't get in nobody else's lane. Stay in your lane. Hallelujah, somebody. And that is important because, because in the encounter, uh, in the time that we encounter things that, that requires us to do and act the way God would have us to act with compassion, we must know these things about ourselves, about our Savior, about our calling. We must know these things. Hallelujah, somebody. And then, oh, and then you, you still must be aware of the physical condition of those who you have compassion for, those that the Spirit has led you to see <laughs> that they have a need. Hallelujah, somebody. Mm, mm, they, they may need your prayer. They, they, they may need you to lay hands on them. They, they may need you to cast out demons, but, but then there's, there's always this physical need. 
Hallelujah. A lot of times uh, our spiritual inadequacies of our spiritual crippleness or our spiritual brokenness uh, manifests itself in physical behavior. <laughs> the way we stop going to church, the way, the way we change, the way we dress and the words that we use normally demonstrates that there's something going on on the inside. Hallelujah, somebody, because this is not the same person that we are used to. This is not the characteristic of a person who is who is a person of faith uh they, they, they there's a spiritual need there's something that's going on on the inside my lord uh, and so jesus had compassion and he healed them and and he taught them uh, uh, uh and he spoke into their lives and 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 he brought them and made them whole again and and then it got late and they began to realize when I say they, I mean the disciples begin to realize that, that, that they are in a remote area. Uh, you know, somewhat like a food desert. Uh, there was no food. And there were 5,000 people or better that were there. And, and, and they went to their master and said, Master, we should, we, should, we should let them go now because it is getting late and, and they have need of food and there's no place to buy food out here. And, and, and Jesus did something that... Mm. would probably startle most of us if I did it. Uh, he said to them, no, you feed them. You feed them. Don't send them away. You feed them. <laughs> My Lord. Mm, 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 mm. Don't send them to no agency. You feed them. Mm-hmm. Don't send them, don't send them to no food bank. You feed them. Hallelujah, somebody. And, and, and his, in his statement, uh, uh, the reason why I'm so intrigued by it is, is, is because his statement alone is, is, is a challenge. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, uh, for them to search their own souls. To, 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 uh, he was shaking their faith. Hallelujah, somebody, if you will. He was testing them uh, uh, to see what their reaction was going to be because for them, <laughs> hallelujah, when they went to Jesus, they thought Jesus was going to say, go, go, okay, send them away. Mm. So, so now, because it didn't, it, it, what they expected to happen didn't happen, they found themselves in the midst of an encounter. Hallelujah, somebody. Because <laughs> they did not predict that Jesus was going to say that. And so Jesus says, let me introduce them again to the word encounter. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. Something unexpected that's happening. And so, 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 so after he said this, he said, they, they respond with, but Lord, all we had. Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> Good God, I'm sorry. All we have is this little boy's lunch. They didn't even have lunch. They had somebody else's lunch. And, and, and all he has, Lord, is, is, is two fish and, and five loaves of bread. <laughs> My Lord. And Jesus, again, is teaching us that in these situations, that in these circumstances, oftentimes we have more than we realize. And what we have is, is more than, than we realize. Hallelujah, somebody, because, because all we have to do is put it in the master's hands. And so, so he said to them, bring it to me. Uh, hallelujah, somebody. And the Bible declared that, that, that when they brought him uh, 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 the five loaves and the two fish, that he took the bread and, and he broke it. Ah, good God from Zion. He took the bread and then he broke mm, 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 mm. He was letting them see into the future, but they could not see it because they were overwhelmed by what was going on in their present. You see, oftentimes God wants to show us our future. He wants to show us the plans that he has, but we cannot see it because we're so overwhelmed by what's going on in the present. Hallelujah, somebody. He broke the bread. And he looked to heaven. Hallelujah, somebody. He, he looked up above and he, he gave thanks to Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. He gave thanks to God, his father, uh, uh, for the five loaves and the two fishes. And, and then, hallelujah, he did something that I call faith in action. <laughs> hallelujah. He, he said, now take this and give it to them. He, he said, have the men sit down. Hallelujah, somebody. And, and take this and, and start feeding them. And the Bible declares that something miraculous happened. I want you to understand 
understand that if, if you just listen to the compassion that God has placed on your heart about things that he would have you do in situations and circumstances that you have no control over, you will see more of God in your life every day. You will see more of God in the life of the people that you come in contact with every day. You will see God moving in front of you, telling you, go this way and go that way and do this and do that. All because of this compassion that he has placed in you for the people of God. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, glory to God. I, I'm just talking about uh, the feeding of the 5,000 and, and how God has compassion, how Christ shows compassion and how he teaches his disciples to move. Hallelujah, somebody. You have more than you realize. Or if you would just learn to thank God for what you have. <laughs> if you would just learn to thank God for what you have. If you would just learn to be appreciative of what you have. Uh, could God from Zion because, because little is much in the master's hand. Oh, glory to God. In this story, on this day as we celebrate, hallelujah, somebody, the rising of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as we celebrate the victory over hell, death, and the grave. Hallelujah, somebody. Uh, somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Somebody ought to tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As a church, as a people, we have to tell the story with excitement. We have to tell it with conviction. We have to tell the story of, of how when Jesus first looked upon our lives, how jacked up our lives was, and, but he didn't look on us with condemnation. He didn't look on us with judgment. Hallelujah, somebody. But he looked upon us with compassion. Uh, he had compassion for us because he knew we had a need. Uh, he knew there was a need for this connection. Uh, he knew there was a need for this relationship. He knew there was a need. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God, that, that we would be in relationship. There was a need for the Ten Commandments. There was a need. Hallelujah, somebody. For the Torah. Oh, glory to God. Not just right now, but a need in our past for forgiveness, a need in our presence for acceptance, and our need in the future. Hallelujah, the plans that he already has for us, the plans of prosperity, the, the plans of, of healing. Huh? Come on, somebody. Glory to God. I, I promise you, in this feeding of the 5,000, it was about more than just bread and meat. It's more than about just the people who were sick. It's about more, hallelujah. It's about the kingdom of God. Oh, glory, hallelujah. How often we have everything we need. But because we're looking elsewhere, because we're looking at other things, we miss it. We miss the opportunity uh, to be salt of the earth, to be the light that God has called out of darkness, to light the way for others to see and find. I'm talking about compassion. On a day that we celebrate the passion of Christ and his victory over the enemy. You see, we are not fighting for the victory. We have the victory. That victory is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. You know, this is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Be all majesty, glory, power, and dominion, now and forevermore. And all God's people said, amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Go and serve God with great joy. Peace in my peace.